Hi everyone, this is Social Change, lecture number 5. This lecture accompanies the reading by Ritzer, chapter 4, Predictability and Control, pages 87 to 122. This is part 1, on predictability. So, predictability. In rationalized society, people prefer to know what to expect in most settings and at most times. They neither want, desire, nor expect surprises. We want to have predictability almost everywhere. And to achieve this predictability, a rationalized society emphasizes discipline, order, systematization, formalization, routine, consistency, and methodical operation. For consumers, predictability gives peace of mind in daily life. For workers, it makes things easier. Some workers even prefer effortless, mindless, repetitive work because it allows them to think of other things, even to daydream while they're doing their tasks. For managers, it is also uh, predictability also makes life easier. Um, it helps them manage workers and consumers and helps in anticipating needs for supplies and materials, personnel requirements, income, and of course, profits. However, there is a downside to all of this. It has a tendency to turn everything, consumption, work, management, into a mind-numbing routine. So how do we create predictable settings? Uh, one of the examples that Ritzer uses is motel chains, which, like fast food restaurants, are pioneers in rationalization process. process. And he talks about Best Western, Holiday Inn, and such motel chains. So these motel chains open in anticipation of the massive expansion of highways and highway travel. Their ability to bring consistency to the motel and hotel industry was the basis for their success and of course have been widely imitated. So I included little Best Western in their motel chains picture. So uh, before the development of such chains, motels were very highly diverse and highly unpredictable. Because they were owned by local owners, every motel was different. Uh, than the next, and you never knew what you were getting into, what amenities will be present, etc. And for example, um, in Alfred Hitchcock's 1960 movie Psycho, we have the Bates Motel, which is the extreme of unpredictability because there's a homicidal maniac who kills unspe unsuspected guests. Uh, motel chains, however, took great pains to make their guests' experiences highly predictable, from tight hiring practices to keeping uh, unpredictable people out and to making familiar signs and colors, and of course to adding same amenities everywhere. So and um, let's move to the fast food industry. And the fast food industry quickly adopted and perfected these practices pioneered by motel chains. And although McDonald's allows its franchises to ma uh, and managers to innovate, the goal for these innovations is always to create an experience that is exactly the same no matter what McDonald's you go to and no matter where you find yourself. So we move from innovation to actually standardization. And examples of that are from signs, the golden arches, to same restaurants elements, from counters, menus, tables, seats, and even collars. Those are the same all over the world. It evokes predictability not only to Americans, but to many other people all over the world. And this kind of predictability is almost the same in all fast food chains, from Starbucks to KFC, Taco Bell, Wendy's, and so on. In other settings, um, as work settings, bureaucracies are more, far more predictable than other kinds of organizations, and they do so in a few ways. So in bureaucracies, employees occupy offices and are expected to live up to expectations associated with them. Bureaucracy has also a clear hierarchy of offices so that people know whom to take orders from and to whom give orders. And almost everything in bureaucracy exists in a written form. And those who read organizations' rules and regulations know what can be expected. And handling an issue involves filing and filing a form, and much of that, is, much of, that of, of course, is done via computers, from emails, tweets, text, and so on. In other examples of this predictability and these bureaucracies, we can see mega churches, um, which are churches with more than 2,000 members, um, and they play a major role in magnetization of religion. Modern, suburb modern suburban houses often uh, present predictability of setting and McDonaldite societies. So interiors and exteriors often look the same, and sometimes it's quite easy to walk into somebody else's home and not immediately know that it's not yours. For example, the TV show Weeds starts by showing those little houses, right? Even communities look quite the same. Some of the very famous Spielberg movies take place in those rationalized suburbs. There is a highly predictable world 
a world that is then hit with highly unpredictable events, for example, E.T. or Portugarst. Some argue that those movies are so popular because people actually long for some unpredictability in their life, even if it is the frightening kind. Then there are the movies that talk about predictability, such as The Truman Show and Pleasantville. And although many industries strive for predictability, sometimes it is an elusive goal because, for example, haircutting, uniform haircut is quite impossible because every head is a little different and every barber operates in a slightly different way. However, there are common signs, colors, logos, shop setups, and even the same products to evoke some form of predictability. So uh, predictability can be also seen in scripting interactions with customers. So McDonaldized organizations have prepared scripts for employees. Think about reality TV today and where is the reality TV since most of it is scripted and I included a picture of a mashup of reality TV programs. Um, so uh, let's talk about predictability in scripts and McDonald's. One of the most familiar scripts at McDonald's is Do You Want Fries With That? And such scripts create highly predictable interactions between workers and customers. And although customers don't usually follow scripts, they tend to develop their own recipe-like response to employees in McDonald's system. Um, other scripts involve uniforms and even a smile. And customers not only often like them, but they actually expect them as well. So scripts, Ritzer uh, argues, can have positive functions. They can be a source of power for an employee, enabling them to control interactions with customers, fending off unwanted or extraordinary demands, but merely by refusing to deviate from the script. They can also help to protect uh, employees from insults, adopting the view that hostility is not aimed at them personally, but at scripts and those who created them. And overall, these scripts can be useful and satisfying for the workers. However, Employees and customers sometimes resist scripts because when you deal with people, nothing is exactly always predictable. Uh, customers also gain from scripts and routines. It offers more reliable, less expensive, speedier service, protects them from incompetence, and can minimize demands and clarify their rights. Also, it is supposed to guarantee equal tra treatment of all customers. However, there are uh, exceptions. Uh, some may react very negatively to employees mindlessly following rules, to workers who seem unresponsive or robot-like. I would uh, point you guys to see a movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas. There is a scene at McDonald's that's very telling. Um, there, then there's, of course, this issue of fake friendliness of those scripted interactions because they reflect insincere, insincere camaraderie. Because do they really care if we have a nice day? But these... Um, this fake friendliness um, exists to lure customers and keep them coming back. So in other settings, uh, we can also see scripted interactions. For example, telemarketing. Um, companies even try to have life insurance sales, these door-to-door -door life insurance sales, predictable. And even though salespeople differ, there's an amazing degree of standardization happening. Often salespeople are told what to say and do. And sales pitches can even be memorized and recited. Uh, workers in McDonald's workplace are supposed to suppress themselves because, you know, they work in an inside job, while insurance salesmen are supposed to develop Mac identity uh, since they work mostly outside. And then there's the issue of making employee behavior predictable. Since often workers are people, we never really know how they might behave. We differ among each other, and if you think about it, even the workers who do the same job create the same products, uh, even the products might differ from each other. But if we develop a routine, this assembly-like um, like behavior, we might even make employee behavior more routine. And I included this picture of a doctor, doctors being very routinized. So how do we uh, make interactions uh, between employees and customers uh, a routine or a predictable. So uh, interactions between employees and customers and counter people in the fast food industry is limited in length and scope, and it, therefore it can be largely routinized. So McDonald's has a series of regulations that, that workers must follow in their dealings with customers. And restaurants also seek to make other work as predictable as possible. Uh, all workers are expected to cook burgers in the same one best way. Workers also follow well-defined steps in preparing all other foods, much of which is, of course, frozen and just needs to be reheated. Uh, 
Uh, fast food places also try to make their workers look, act, and think more predictable, from uniforms um, to rules of makeup, hair length, and even jewelry. All this is meant to indoctrinate worker into a corporate culture, and incentives are used to reward uh, employees who follow that. And of course, punishments are for those who don't. Um, restaurant managers in McDonald's Empire also attend Central Hamburger University, which among other things, instills in them predictable thinking and behavior. And undercover inspectors are often sent to see whether um, the installed rules are being followed. You can read more about this on pages 95 to 96. In other places, we have this Disney look, um, the fact that amusement parks use very similar techniques. Disney, Disney, for example, has specific guidelines describing how workers should look and how they should act. So does the Bush Gardens. Then we have the creation of predictable products and processes. Because even goods and services sold and, uh, and methods to produce them are highly predictable. Think about chain stores from Apple, H&M, Old Navy, Victoria's Secret and others that pretty much dominate all malls. Few products, if any, are really unique. And procedures for displaying merchandise, greeting customers, ringing up purchases are still very similar. Uh, so examples of predictable products. In the fast food industry, as Richard laughs, even the pickles are standardized. Of course, we know that food made in fast food restaurant is highly predictable. Think about short menus, easy way to prepare and serve the food, uh, use of uniform ingredients, cooking, and even packaging. Um, and although sometimes materials might not be uniform, packaging for the pro those products is so that implies that so will the food be predictable. And predictable food requires predictable in ingredients, and McDonald's has very strict guidelines on size, shape, quality of meat, buns and vegetables it uses, and increasing use of frozen foods addresses unpredictabilities related to supply of raw materials. We have even predictable products in the entertainment world. Think about sequels. Predictable products generally attract larger audiences, but they often succeed at the expense of movies based on new concepts, ideas, and characters. Studios, for example, like sequels because the same characters, actors, and plot lines can be used many times over. Sequels also succeed at the box office versus original movies, and therefore profits are more predictable. Viewers also like them because they enjoy seeing their favorite characters played by familiar actors in very familiar settings. But, like McDonald's meals, sequels are often not that good, but at least you know what you're getting into. Think about TV. Sitcoms and comedies are quite similar in settings. Jokes and looks are very similar. Um, think about reality TV and spin-offs of different housewife survivors and so on. And even um, cruises. It, those are highly predictable uh, trips that allow minimum contact with other culture and they often create a paradox because people go to considerable expense and effort to go to a foreign country only to have as little contact with those foreign cultures as possible. And then finally, um, there's this minimizing danger and unpleasantness, if, unpleasantness issue. So malls are attractive at least in part by making shopping more predictable since shops are often the same and even weather, if it's nasty outside, it's really nice inside, right? It's also a place relatively free from crime of the city streets and um, an environment is always upbeat. So avoidance of crime is a key factor in rise of family fun centers. These are the safe haven in the crime-ridden cities. Kids are less likely to get injured. There's staff on watch and safety checks are done. Modern amusement parks are often much safer than their predecessors, and even what food is sold depends on what mess it could make, so there's no selling of gum, peanuts, or alcohol. Even camping, escaping to nature is now predictable and offers amenities. RVs are homes away from home. Modern campgrounds offer a lot of amenities, from delis, pools, laundromats, to TV rooms, etc. And the irony is that despite this claim to safety, McDonald's and other fast food places seem very prone to violence. And one example from a recent history is the Wendy massacre that happened on Main Street in Queens in 2000. All right, so this is predictability. Next part will be about control.